Hey guys, sorry for the lack of videos, but I was writing final exams for university, so hopefully content should resume now that I'm done that. For today's video, I want to look at the Chrysler 300 and check out the differences in this car between the US and Europe. Why did I choose these two countries? Well, obviously the Chrysler 300 is technically an American vehicle and has been very popular in the US. And it also had some sales in Europe and had some very distinct variations and models that I do want to check out, like the 300C station wagon, some diesel options, and the Lancia Tema. Of course, the 300 has been sold in many other countries as well, but there's not enough time to go over that in one video. Also, everything for the US will also apply to Canada, as it's basically the same market. I'll cover the first generation first from 2005 to 2010, then we'll move on to the second gen from 2011 to 2014, and the facelift from 2015 until the present day, and for each I'll outline the different models and specs between European and American Chrysler 300s. So let's start with the American first gen 300. The 300 was first shown at the 2003 New York International Auto Show, and by January 2004, Chrysler started producing this car for its first model year in 2005. The first newer Gen 300 was a four-door sedan with a large silver grille, long hood, and low sloping roofline, overall a design that mixed luxury with muscle in my opinion. The 300 shared the Chrysler LX platform along with the Charger, Magnum, and Challenger, featuring components from the Mercedes-Benz E-Class from the 1996 to 2002 model years, after which it was discontinued. The 300 was marketed to be a luxury sedan as opposed to more of a muscle car like the other LX platform vehicles, and in the US, this car was created as a large and powerful rear-wheel drive sedan that was both sporty and luxurious. It also offered a cheaper price point than most competitors, giving you a lot of car for a starting price of just under $24,000 for a base model. As for the models offered in the US, there were several trims including Base, Touring, Touring Plus, Limited, 300C, and SRT8 at the top. There were also a few different engines to go along with that. I'll try to throw some performance numbers and prices on screen for some of the models to follow along with, and I'll be using numbers from 2005 and 2006 model years because models had slight changes as the years went on. As I've mentioned, base models started at under $24,000 and got a 2.7 liter V6 with 190 horsepower and a 4-speed automatic transmission. There weren't too many extra features, just basic stuff like 17-inch wheels and cloth seats. The Touring was usually above the base model, coming in around $27,000 and giving you a more powerful 3.5 liter V6 with 250 horsepower and either 4 or 5 speed automatic. These models came with more luxurious features like fog lights, heated mirrors and leather trim seats. Near the top would have been the 300C, starting at roughly $33,000. This is where Chrysler finally made a V8 available for their sedan, with the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi standard on this model, and that meant 340 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque, and a 5-speed auto, and that horsepower was bumped up to 360 for 2009 and 2010. You also got more premium features, like 18-inch wheels, dual-zone climate control, and heated cushioned leather seats. And at the top, the SRT8 was found, carrying a price tag of almost $40,000. This was a beast with a 6.1 liter V8 Hemi with 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. As for performance on these cars, as you can see on screen, the 2.7 was painfully slow with a 0 to 60 time of around 10 seconds, and the 3.5 bumped that up to 7.4 seconds. The 5.7 Hemi was faster, doing it in around 5.5 seconds, and the SRT8 was even faster in the high 4 second range. Moving on to the European versions, there were noticeable differences and more options for the first gens. The 300 was also sold in Europe as a four-door sedan, but they also got a five-door station wagon. Unlike the North American 300s which were manufactured in Brampton, Ontario and Canada, the 300 wagons and sedans were manufactured in Graz, Austria through automobile company Magna Stair. Some differences that apply to everything would be that Magna wanted to upgrade most of the suspension to appeal to European tastes, and also instead of the Chrysler wheels, Dodge Charger and Magnum wheels were often used on the Euro 300s, including the Dodge center caps as you might be able to see in some of the photos. As for the regular Euro sedan, there was no base model and everything was called the 300C instead, 
and they got the American 300C body style and interior. Between 2005 to 2010, the sedans pretty much all got the same engine offerings as North America, from the 2.7 liter V6 to the SRT8 6.1 liter Hemi. Europe did get an extra engine choice for both the sedans and wagons with a 300C diesel offering from 2006 to 2014. The first gen diesel was a Mercedes-Benz 3 liter turbo V6 that made 215 horsepower and a solid 376 pound-feet of torque. That diesel still got the 5-speed auto and rear-wheel drive. Performance was okay with a 0 to 60 of between 7.2 to 7.5 seconds, a quarter mile of 15.5 seconds, and a top speed of 140 miles per hour, but the diesel was rated for some pretty great gas mileage with 26 mpg city, 43 highway, and a combined 35 mpg overall. On the 2008 diesel models in the UK, a 300C SRT design package could be added because otherwise there was no SRT diesel option. If you bought in, you would have got an SRT 20 inch wheels, an SRT steering wheel and leather seats, a badge on the trunk, and many other exterior and interior perks that were similar to the real SRT8 model. The other major difference is that wagon I mentioned. This was sold in Europe as the 300 Touring, which is not to be confused with the North American sedan's Touring trim level. While the US and Canada got the Dodge Magnum wagon, Europe got the 300 Touring wagon, which did share many parts with that Magnum. Almost all of the 300C Touring models were right-hand drive and available from 2005 to 2010, but they were scrapped after that. The Touring Wagon had all the same offerings as the regular 300 sedan in Europe, including all the engines. The 3.5 and 5.7 were available in all-wheel drive, and the rest were solely rear-wheel drive. In 2006, the 300C Touring SRT8 model was released, so European buyers could get a beastly performance wagon. On screen are the specifications and performance of each of these engines for the wagon, with some slightly different numbers from the American sedan. Most of the 0 to 60 times are quite a bit slower on these wagons, probably due to the heavier weight of them or Chrysler understating numbers in Europe. All of the Euro 300s will be slower by default from the factory, since they are a couple hundred pounds heavier than the American version. The last difference, of course, is sales, which is obvious. The 300 was an icon in the US, featured in hip hop and rap videos on movies and TV shows like Desperate Housewives, driven and desired by celebrities such as Snoop Dogg, and selling over 10,000 cars a month at its peak. Overall, first-gen US sales totaled over 670,000, and European sales over the same time were about 50,000 for all sedans and wagons combined. In 2011, the second generation of the 300 was put out by Chrysler, and this car is still on sale as of 2019. There were plenty of models offered, such as the Touring Limited S 300C and 300C all-wheel drive, but there were just two engines, the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 and the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi that carried over from the first gen. Using 2012 prices and specs, the base started out at 27,670 with the Pentastar engine and 292 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. The base model got no frills options like 17-inch wheels, dual zone climate control, and premium cloth seats. The Limited took it up a notch for 32,670, adding an 8-speed automatic, heated leather seats, and a Parkview parking assist system. That 8-speed transmission became standard in 2013 on all the V6 models, and was standard in 2015 on all the V8 models. The 300S was very popular as it was a sport model, with great features like black accents, 20-inch wheels, 10-speaker beat sound system, and paddle shifters for spirited driving. You could get either the V6 or V8 on this model, and the V6 went up by 8 horsepower to 300, and by 4 pound-feet of torque to 264 from the other V6 models. The S with the 5.7 Hemi would start at 39,670, and that gave you 363 horsepower and 394 pound-feet of torque from that engine, along with a 5-speed auto. Chrysler also introduced a new SRT model in 2012, with a sticker price of 47,670. With that big price came a big engine, the 6.4 liter 392 Hemi with 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. There were also upgraded features like 20-inch forged black wheels, leather and suede seats, an upgraded fascia, lowered suspension, Brembo brakes, and more. Performance was definitely upgraded from the first gen, as you'll see on screen. The V6s can do 0 to 60 between 6.6 .6 to 7.1 seconds depending on the model and transmission. The 5.7 Hemi hits 0 to 60 in the mid 5 second range, while the SRT8 is in the low 4s. Switching over to Europe again, the first major difference is again the engine choices. 
the diesel option carried over from the first gen, and you could also get the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, but not any of the V8 options. The diesel was a 3 liter VM Motori V6, with two different options on that. The base version had 187 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque, while the turbo diesel version pushed that up to 236 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. And these diesel options were mated to a 5-speed auto, but the Pentastar got the 8-speed auto. And the 300C lived on in the UK, where it went on sale in June of 2012, with those two diesel options and a choice between limited and executive trims. The other huge difference is that the Chrysler 300 itself was replaced and rebadged by the Lancia Tema in many European markets, and that car lasted from 2011 to 2014 before being cancelled. Lancia is a renowned Italian car manufacturer and has been around since its creation in 1906. They are more recently known for luxurious cars, and they're now part of the Italian group Fiat Chrysler Automobile. So the Lancia Tema was similar to the 300 as you can obviously tell from the pictures, but it was modified to appeal more to Europeans. The front and rear have traditional Lancia badges instead, including the V-shape on the front grille and cursive writing on the trunk. The headlights are also LED and smaller compared to the American version. And the front bumper layout is slightly different as well. There were three models of the Tema, Gold, Platinum and Executive, but I'm not sure which countries got which models, but I know that these three were offered in Italy. The interior is where the Tema really steps things up, using higher quality materials for a more luxurious cabin to better match the expectations of a European luxury car. The dashboard has two-tone Poltrana Frau leather with stitching, there are storage compartments with heating and cooling functionality, and you can also find perforated Napa leather, Alcantara, briar wood inserts, and chrome and precious woods inside the cabin. To keep the cabin very quiet, they used laminated glass instead of tempered for the windows, and there were acoustic panels used in the passenger compartment, wheel arches, and underbody panels to keep noise out. There was also a new dual cluster design with sapphire blue lighting, and also they had tri-zone climate control. Other standard features included the Uconnect 8.4 inch touchscreen, 6 to 8 speaker Alpine electronic sound system, 7 airbags, self-adjusting by Xenon headlights, and tons of safety features like rain brake support, forward collision warning, and adaptive cruise control, all pretty new features as of 2011. The Tema was also extremely safe, scoring 5 out of 5 stars on crash tests at the Euro New Car Assessment Program. The suspension and handling also changed for the European market. So for the suspension, it was multi-link both in the front and back, with hydraulic bushings, and the steering also got an electro-hydraulic system to offer more sensitivity when driving. And this car also got a four-wheel drive system similar to the 300, where the system is automatically activated when any type of slipping or rainy or snowy conditions are detected. Overall sales from 2011 to 2014 for the US totaled over 218,000, while European sales over the same time were around 13,000 for all the Lancia Temas. That brings us to 2015, where the Lancia Tema was cancelled, pretty much signaling the end of the Chrysler 300 in Europe. Unfortunately, this car got a poor reputation and reception as many Europeans felt that the car and body were too American and purists of the Lancia brand claimed that this car went against their traditional stylings of previous cars from this manufacturer and didn't like the fact that the car was not fully designed and built in Italy. For the US in 2015, the 300 did get a facelift, so a bit of a redesign with a restyled front and rear fascia, new black and silver mesh grille, 8-speed automatic transmission with rotary e-shift, a better Uconnect system, and tons of safety features, but no SRT, at least for the US and Canada, even though it did get sold abroad in 16 different countries, such as Australia, the Middle East, and South Africa, to name a few. As for 2019, the 300 still somewhat resembles the original version from 2005, and pretty much remains untouched from 2015. There are now five models, the Touring, Touring L, 300S, Limited, and 300C, and just the 3.6 liter V6 and 5.7 liter V8 as the engine options. Many reports claim that this will be the last year of the car in the United States before it disappears for 2020, but only time will tell for that. So to do a very brief summary, for the first gen, Europe got a station wagon and diesel engine, and for the second gen, they got the Lancia Tema instead and two more diesel options. And for all the European vehicles, they had upgraded steering and suspension, along with a more luxurious interior to appeal to European tastes.
So that's the end of this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out the differences between the United States and Europe for this beautiful car. And let me know what you think of the European options down in the comment section below. As for me, I really love that luxurious interior that the Lancia Tema offers, and I think that it does look better than the American version on the inside. Anyways, thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar videos, and I'll see you in the next one.